My friends, welcome back. Uh, I have done already several videos. Now it's time uh, to speak about Joe Rogan. Very popular name, Joe Rogan. He has millions of uh, listeners. He is on Spotify, as you know. He is not one of my favorites, to be honest. He speaks too dirty for my taste. I don't know why the need uh, to spill always uh, F words. I don't know that doesn't make you more genuine, more of a man, or more of, a, I don't know, truthful. Why the need to spew those kind of words? Well, freedom of uh, expression? I don't know. To each their own in the end. Um, so, if you speak a little bit more uh, tidy, like if you allow me to put it this way, maybe I'll watch him a little bit more. Even in this segment that I want to refocus, even in the segment in which he quotes uh, a segment from the Bible, if you allow me to repeat the words, segment is the key word, friends. He's gonna read Revelation chapter 13, and his guest as well, he has a very positive opinion about the biblical prophecies. So, Joe Rogan, before you were saying that. Uh, it's not really into bad with uh, Christianity or anything related to Christianity, the Bible. And now he starts to quote, to read a chapter from the Bible, Revelation. What's happening with Joe? Is he into something? Is he about to get uh, to know God? I don't know, I don't know. I'm just asking questions, okay? You have the right to ask questions. I am asking questions as well. Because I'm curious. But uh, let's take a look, shall we? Let's see exactly what uh, what is happening here. Mercifully, someone already blipped the words that I was talking to you about. Music as usual, David Lastra. Revive us again. Pausing this music because we need to go there. And we need to hear the man talking. Uh, this time he really makes a lot of sense. He speaks my language. He speaks from the Bible. So three and two and one. Let's go. One day in the future, everything will be traceable. That's right. And yeah. that's, you know, this is where I get, this is where being raised an Episcopalian. In the book of Revelations, it's gonna, as a Christian, you're going to read it. This is where I get scared because it's too similar to the mark of the beast. It's too similar to exactly what it says. You won't be able to trade. You won't be able to do anything unless you have the mark, unless you bear the mark. So what is that, that, that in that term? In the, how, is that how is the mark of the beast described in the Bible? We should read it because I think you're on to something. We're now officially podcasting. This is it. We're opening up the book of Revelations. <laughs> We're in now. Yeah. The mark of the beast. It's like you can't do anything. You can't sell. You can't. If you don't take the mark, you're f***ed. I mean, that's, that's that. Like, if you remove the ability to trade currency in a private way. Yeah. You now can, you, you are now controlled. You are now monitored. That's mm -hmm. like, or then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, and it spoke like a dragon. It exercises all the authority of the first beast in its presence and makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose mortal wound was healed. It performs great signs, even making fire come down from the heaven to earth in front of people. And by the signs that it allowed to work in the presence of the beast, it deceives those who dwell on earth, telling them to make an image for the beast that was wounded by the sword and yet lived. And it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast might even speak and Chat might GPT. cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to be slain. It also causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark. That is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. 
let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is 666. This is Richard Werner, the top academic scholar in the world on central banking. He wrote the book and did the documentary, The Princes of the Yen, about the Japanese central bank. Here he is in Malmo, Sweden in May. The nature of the CBDC, what, what is it actually going to look like? They never talk about that. Right. Um, but I heard one European central banker tell me what it's going to look like. He saw it um, and it was around this, this large and would be implanted under your skin. Trending today at 623, a British company has an idea that would let you ditch your wallet or purse and still be able to pay for things. Mm. But as you can imagine, not everyone's on board with this one. And here's why. They're selling microchips to implant under your skin. The company Walletmore says the $300 chip is the size of a grain of rice. You'd most likely have it implanted in your hand. And once it's activated, you can use it at a checkout by just swiping your hand over the card reader. I would love this because I never know where my debit card is yeah. actually in one of their wallets. So if I could put it right in my hand, I'd be happy about it. Oh, man, I'm surprised with that. But hey, more sunrise ahead of 630. I mean, COVID makes it, it accelerates the process of digitalization and automatization. It legitimizes the deployment of mass surveillance and it makes surveillance go under your skin. That was the video by NCC scene very well. It was not just uh, Joe. He, uh, he talk, uh, He read the Revelations chapter 13. And then we saw application in real life. Whoever has the sign is able to buy and to sell. Who doesn't have the mark? Cannot. So not the sign. Let's see, speak it clearer. The mark. Joy is into something. I think he's being a, a red pill. <laughs> you know, uh, this is famous in the conservative circles, but I think Christians can use it too. Red pill, that means you are into the truth. And the truth is one. All the other truths are relative because we live in a, a relative world. Tell me one truth here that is absolute. Nothing. Nothing is absolute here. Because we live in a relative world. Theory of relativity, good old Einstein. Relative. This is our world. But one truth is absolute, and that is Jesus. The word of God is absolute. The word of God, past, present, and the future. Tell me another book that knows the future. What? Or tell me about uh, the prophecies of Nostradamus. <laughs> That's make-believe, friend. That's make-believe. Interpretation that are given to the text. The text doesn't actually mean that. And I'm not speaking because I just uh, for the sake of speaking, but I look deeper into it. Anyway, this is a different kind of subject. We're not going to talk about it right now. But I'm excited that uh, Joe starts to wake up, or it seems so. So, that was the video. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Be Jesus. Read your Bible. Be aware of what's happening in this world. We need God so much. I always say, we need Jesus now more than ever. See you soon, friends. And always take care.